Okay, lady, okay. it is time. Are you ready Let's to do, do this? this? Thing. Okay. Whew. Take a big, big, deep breath. <laughs> I'm gonna center myself. Okay. I'm gonna root my sit bones and do new products. Yeah. Okay. All right. New, new, new. What is this? This is an updated product. This is uh, our very beloved Pi TFT, uh, 2.8 inch T TFT display for Raspberry Pi. This is a great display. We use it on all sorts of projects. We've seen it all over the world. Um, it's one of our most popular Pi accessories and we have updated it. It now comes fully assembled. It is now plug and play. You do have to still install the Linux kernel, which we're working on making it a little bit easier to do that. We have a couple images you can download, but it, there's no soldering involved anymore. Uh, it comes pre-soldered and there's caps on tape on it. And it's lovely and it's beautiful and you just plug into your Pi and you are ready to do things. Yeah. I have a couple other photos that I put in yeah. here. So yeah, this is in action, yeah. You can do videos. Yeah. You just do a console. Here's what it looks like. Um, this is the assembled version. Looks like that. We're also working on getting the capacitive one assembled, and also we will be working on more screens in the future. Yeah. Okay, next up, this is um, another Raspberry Pi product. This is the Bitscope. Yeah, we got the Bitscope in. This is an interesting um, sort of like a STEM tool. This is an oscilloscope logic analyzer tool for uh, Raspberry Pi. Actually, it's for any computer, but they've um, added code for Raspberry Pi so you can do a circuit analysis on your Raspberry Pi. It has a little microcontroller, and the microcontroller does actually the, the analog reading and such. And then the most important thing is, of course, they wrote software, and there's a scripting language. So, mm -hmm. uh, hey, can you go to the previous photo? Yeah. Shows the, uh, well, I also have this one. Yeah, because this is the show, photo that shows it comes, it's USB powered, and it comes with a whole bunch of probes, and you can basically probe your project and then watch voltages. Uh, so if you don't want an oscilloscope, or you, or you want a portable oscilloscope, or just something that's small and easy to use, I mean, we'll, we'll probably show how to use this with the um, Pi TFT to make a portable. Yeah, Bitscope. that'd be cool. And then um, here's a screenshot of some of the output that you can get. This is the software. So yeah, this looks like a, uh, a spectrum analysis uh, tool. Like there's a signal, and then there's a spectrum below it or okay. above it. Sorry. All right, next up. This is a lot of fun. Look at this. Oh, this is the pan, uh, pan tilt. Yeah. So this is a teeny pan tilt. Um, there's other pan tilts that are larger. This one is cute and small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we like that it's cute and small because we will probably do projects with something like the Pi camera or other small cameras like the ones we have in the store. Um, most webcams are not that big anymore. Um, this can definitely handle like any webcam that we've seen. It, it's not that un unstrong. It's not that weak. Um, I will power it up just to show. Actually, I will. Uh, can I show them the overhead? So I want to show them yeah. the panning and the tilting. Let's do this. So. Um, that over there. I will power this to show it moving. So, just one second for this to reset. Okay, so there's two servos. This one goes up and down. It's the tilting, and then this one is the panner, and so you can see the body moves, and then the base has a couple holes you can attach. You can probably even just foam tape it. And then these little clips, you can cut these off. They're, it's for gripping onto like little mini cameras and such. Um, it might fit a GoPro or something like that. I'm going to unplug this now. Well, you're using a, a pro trinket to, to run this thing. I might be. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'll show you that. Yeah, this is, has this has like a, you know pretty wide range of motion. It's like 50 degrees, and then this has approximately 180. It's like 170 or 160. And this one's fully assembled, so it comes to you like this, ready to go. And um, you know, there's the two servo plugs. You just need to uh, connect this to any servo driver, microcontroller, or Arduino. Even the Raspberry Pi can do a little bit of servo control. Um, and uh, Bob's your uncle. I like that saying, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so let's say you're like, uh, I already have some servos. I don't want the pre-assembled servo kit. I, or maybe I want to use Metal Gear servos instead of these lower cost um, plastic gear servos, not a problem. For advanced users, we have the uh, pan tilt kit. Okay. And it's all the parts that you may recognize in the screws, and you get the joy of assembling it. It's a little less expensive too because it's not assembled, but um, if, you're, if you're totally cool with that, uh, go to town, especially if you have servos already, or you want to recycle servos, it just takes like you know half an hour of like screwing things together, okay. and you're golden. Okay, we will continue moving along. Yeah, and then there's a nice photo of the uh, pan tilt kit there. Yeah, I got this here. Yeah, so those are all the parts you get. Do okay. Use any micro server. Looks so great. there's a billion -y of these. We're now in. We're now in. Matrix land. Matrix land. Okay, so let's. Uh, this is. Can you just, uh, just yeah. hold on here. This is an eight by sixteen or sixteen by eight, depending on how you want to 
look at it. Uh, LED matrix. This is uh, in the family of LED matrices we have. It's I squared C, so you use two pins to control uh, all these LEDs, and the, the chip can actually handle this many LEDs. It multiplexes them nicely. And we have code for Arduino and Raspberry Pi. There's example code for like every microcontroller. This is a, a very popular um, product. People have done lots of projects with it. Um, it comes as a backpack, and then you solder in two matrices. Can you go to the next? Okay. So comes yeah, like this. this is the only so this because this is the same on a lot of these. I just yeah, have you, one you don't photo. Have to, yeah, we'll just look at this one. So yeah. you get two matrices and then the backpack and then we have one backpack and then we have a whole range of different matrices and you plug in whichever one you like and then yeah. you can plug into your breadboard like this and control it with your trinket or your pro trinket or your Arduino or your Flora or what have you. You got choices. All good. And then we have a little demo. Yeah. So GIF. what we have is a because animated gifts everyone likes. Everyone um, likes animated gifts. And so we also have a, a photo of each one. We yeah. have like I okay. don't know, six or seven of so these. So that was pure green. This is light green, so it's like a yellowish green. We also yeah. have around all these are rounded dots. Yeah. And then we also have red, classic red rounded dots. Okay. We also have white. The next up. Yeah. White with rounded dots, really bright. We'll show how bright it is. We have to dim the camera quite a bit. You can see from the yeah. reflection, it's incredibly bright. We also have bl blue. With rounded dots. And you were driving these with just a uh, regular trinket, too. Yeah, this is a trinket. Yeah. Trinket or per the, trinket will do it. Either one is fine. And um, this is blue rounded dots. And then we also have, after this, uh, square. Blue, uh, blue. So if you feel like square pixels. I like square pixels. I really pixels. like the square ones. You yeah, like square? Okay, we'll show a demo of really square nice. ones. Uh, okay, and then after that, we've got red square. Or no, sorry, this is amber square. Yeah. We also have, which is like a kind of a reddish, orangish. Yeah. We also have a uh, green, pure green square, a really powerful green color, really bright. Yeah. We have a orange square, and we have a white square. Yeah, this is, and oh, that's it. yeah. Bam. And, then, and then I have the one last animated graphic. Okay. okay. Whew. So, yeah, lots of square. And I can also demo this on the overhead All right. as well using my. Pro Trinket, so I can show you. Okay. And it acts like, a, it, as far as the, so I actually just have it with some, uh, I can swip, switch out the matrices. So yeah, this is blue rounded and white square, or I can um, switch this out to make this. Can you have two different colors? Yeah, oh. you can, but we kind of only sell it right now as a kit where you get, I'm just demoing it with two colors because it's not going to be the same brightness. If, if someone got two kits, they could just swap them out. Yeah, right? if you have two kits, you can swap them out, but because they're not going to be the same brightness, uh, and they also, you know, they don't look exactly the same, we only have them as, as kits. That's the orange or amber. This one is, I think, blue square pixel. This is orange square pixel. So there's a lot going on here. Yeah. And then uh, I have these even e more. These even look good over a webcam. I'm impressed. Yeah, here's the, uh, the square ones are really nice. Yeah, I know. I don't really like square. I like square. But, you know, ground is a, you know, it's classic. This is green rounded. Let's see, what's this one? This one is blue square. We already did that one. White square. We already did that one. Anyway, you get, the, you get the picture, right? This is yellow. I'll do the yellow square. Yeah. It's a little bit different than amber. I mean, you look at the photos. We, we did as best we could to um, show clearly. But, yeah, basically, it's, it's matrix party. Um, and yeah, you can. It's a lot of pixels. Uh, you can scroll text. You can draw, you know, shapes. I can like draw a circle, draw a square, draw lines. You know, the GFX library supports it. And uh, you know, pick whatever color you like. Okay. All right. Moving right along. We got more. Okay, we're not done. But wait, there's more. Yeah. But wait, there's more. Okay. Put this away. So next up, this is. New touchscreen. This is a new touchscreen. Yeah. We now have a larger touchscreen. This is the uh, 3.5 inch TFT touchscreen. Um, this is twice as many pixels as the 2.8, which we have. This is just a breakout. So this is for you know if you are want to mount it somewhere, you want to use it with Arduino or another microcontroller. We have code that's very easily ported to any microcontroller you like. We have a data sheet for the chipset as well. It's a uh, it's a full memory controller, so it it has the uh, frame memory stored in the um, display. So you don't have to clock the display constantly. You can use SPI and you say like, turn on pixel number eight by four green and it just does it. So that's kind of nice. You can use it with low gram microcontrollers like the Arduino. You don't have to buffer yeah. and, and sync the display, which is quite nice. But the means are a little bit slower. Uh, it also comes with two 
interfaces, we give you a choice. You can have SPI, which is slower if you're using Arduino because it's not very fast SPI, um, uh, but uses only four or five pins. Or you can use 8-bit, uh, which requires 12 pins, but or 13 pins, I can't remember, but it's much, much faster because you're writing 8 bits at a time. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, if you have the pins, go with 8-bit, of course. It's much, much faster. Um, if you don't care about speed as much, you can go with SPI. Again, the speed thing only matters if you're, if you're drawing a lot of text very, very fast. If you're doing something like this interactive drawing demo, uh, it doesn't actually matter because you're not draw, you know, you're not filling the entire screen very, very fast. And I'll, I'll show that off as well. Yeah. People can show us some photos. This yeah, I guess the photos. Because of some header. It's nice and chunky. Here's the back. It's uh, got level shifting on it. So it's I compatible. like that some of our photos have photos of our photos. I needed the color. <laughs> it's, uh, it's 5 volt compatible, yeah. so you can use it with 3 or 5 volts. The backlight has a boost converter on it, but um, you can dim it with PWM. There's a 6 LED backlight. You can see text how looks great. Yeah. the text looks like super sharp, and you can see how much you can fit on there. 16-bit color. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. Right now we have Arduino code works with any Arduino, and then we will um, we will show how to use this with a uh, Raspberry Pi BeagleBone. This is pretty amazing. This is um, really advanced, beautiful screens now getting in the hands of uh, makers. This is this is. This yeah, these are. This is a screen that's used in low cost. The, yeah, it's it's. What's interesting is that they, there's these screens, and like I know that they're out there, but I can't get them. So these screens are used in low cost, um, like smartphones, like not like the iPhone. The iPhone uses a, a, a MIPI display, but if you're you're getting like a, a low cost, like lower cost Android device, or maybe if you're in another country and you kind of it's a fifty dollar phone or a sixty dollar phone, it, it might be a screen like this, and because these screens are now on the market, I can order them at less than like 100,000 quantity because you know, if I order screens, basically they say you have to buy a thousand um, and they use a standard display size and layout. But if I need a custom screen, it's, you have to order like 100,000 at least and it's extremely expensive. Um, this one has resistive touch. We're working on getting capacitive touch. Like I have a sample, but um, I'm still fighting the data sheet to get the capacitive touch to work. But hopefully we'll have the capacitive multi-touch no ETA when it's okay. ready. I'll be happy and I'll release it. Um, All right. So and now here's demo. yeah. Do you want to do you want me to go to the overhead? Yeah, let's go to the overhead. Okay. More live demos. So here is um, the Arduino and I have a bunch of wiring and I have the resistive touch just uh, wired up. And um, yeah, you can just you can just draw with your fingernail. And this is this paint demo allows you to just um, select whatever color you like and uh, go to town. So you can see it is responsive. I mean, it, even though it's a big display and it's SPI, if you're doing, if you're not like trying to fill the entire display, um, which takes like a, a second or two, it's, um, it's perfectly yeah. fine. This is for like little UI elements, like put up a button and you press it or graph something. Um, yeah, not, not, full not full screen video. This will not do full screen video yeah. on an Arduino. You can do video with it on a Raspberry Pi. I'm, I'm still working on, on how fast you can run it. Um, but with SPI, it is tough. It's it's a lot of bits. So, okay. yeah. All right. And now tonight. Okay. The star of the show, besides you, it is Pro Trinket. Do do do. Pro Trinket's here. A year in the making. Well, not a year, but I mean, it's been a year since Trinket. So yeah. Okay. I guess you could say that. So, Lady Ada, what is the Pro Trinket? Pro Trinket is the Trinket's little sister, big sister. Sorry, we um we released a Trinket about a year ago, and it's a little um. AT Tiny based breakout board that we wanted for projects that didn't need an Arduino, like something small, like blink some NeoPixels or like you saw the demo, it displays text on um, a matrix. You don't need a full Arduino and, and if you only have one or two Arduinos, it's, it's ideal if you can save that for your bigger projects or prototyping because it's very prototyper friendly. Um, but people kind of said like, well, you know, the, the Trinket is great, but I want more memory and I want more flash and I want more RAM and I want more pins. And I'm like, well, the chip we used only has like eight pins. Like they can't, I'm like, I don't know how much we can squeeze out of there. But then I went back to the drawing board and thought, okay, well, what if we took the idea of the Pro Trinket, which is this small USB programmable, um, mounting holes, easy to use, Arduino compatible, um, but use a bigger chip. And so then I went to um, my distributors and I hammered them on pricing for um, at Mega 328 chips, and they were like, oh, okay, we'll give you a better price, and I got the price down to the point where I can actually basically make something that has all the core elements of an Arduino, but um, little teeny size, and only yeah. I'll even hold one up. And 
Hold on. Um, what we managed to do, not only because our purchasing power, we can buy a lot of stuff, but we our manufacturing capability and yield is really high. We got the trinket, um, uh, the, the pro trinket down to 995, and then you lowered the price of the trinket too. Yeah, to to seven dollars. Yeah. So it's a dollar less because the um, the the yield of actually the of the um, for in the last year we've improved our manufacturing so much that actually the trinket is much easier for us to manufacture now. So it's like oh, okay, like well yeah. let's reduce the price on that. And then offer a pro trinket. So the pro trinket is, is the same chip used in an Arduino Uno or Dwemly Nova Classic, um, and it has this basically the same number of pins. Um, there's two pins that are missing for USB number two and number seven, but it has all the other pins. And so the five volt version, especially because it runs at the same clock rate, will run like pretty much any Arduino program um, as long as you don't need pins two and seven. You can program it two ways. Uh, you can use FTDI header. So a lot of Arduino compatibles, they don't have the USB to serial chip on the board. They have them in the cable, like you see here. I have an FTDI cable here somewhere. And it's a chunky cable, and it's also like 10 bucks. So it's a trade-off because you take the, the cost of that chip and you move it into this cable. Um, so you can use that. And when you use that, it just works just like an Arduino Uno. And like, you, know, you, you program it through Arduino. Or you can program it through USB. And the USB is a micro USB. We got really good at... USB, micro USB layout so that it's, it's we do the, the um, man pry test where I, I give the um, pro micro, the, the, sorry, the micro USB yeah. on the pro trinket to you and you try to um, pull it off the board using the uh, USB cable. Yeah. And actually you broke the board, you tore the board, board in half. Yeah. Before you um, managed to, to pull the part off because it's got this through hole pins. So it's got a micro USB which is really popular. And you plug it into your computer, and you just have to install the driver um, on Windows. On Mac and Linux, you don't. But Windows, we have a signed driver you can use. Works with Windows 8 and all that good stuff. And then you can upload code to it over USB. Now, it's not a USB to serial converter. It's just the bootloader runs on USB, which is convenient still, because for a lot of projects, maybe, you've already debugged it. You know it works. And so you just upload it to um, the Pro Trinket, and you don't need the USB to serial converter part of it anymore. Um, or if you want, you can connect the FTDI cable and then you have the USB serial. So you can have like a choice of, of two different ways to upload code. Um, it's got 18 GPIO. It's got all the pins that you know and love from the Arduino Uno um, and compatibles. Uh, it's got two extra analog pins, A6 and A7. I just shoved them on there because we had a little bit of space. Got a power LED. I uh, got a red number 13 LED for debugging. It has a reset switch, so you can reset it to get the bootloader mode going. Uh, I don't know, just, it's just, I've been using it for a little bit, and it's worked really, really well. And, uh, yay, it's done. So I think this will be fun for people who want to make projects small, but they don't want to, like, take an Arduino and, like, try to cut off the headers and shove it in there. This yeah. is, it's just really, really small. We have even a photo comparing it. Did yeah, I, I don't have the comparison photo okay. here, but I, but I did post it it's in the chat. The web, it's yeah. on the website. We have a photo comparing a, a trinket. And a pro trinket, and yeah. like they're really. I can actually grab it real quick too. They're really close in size. Yeah. The pro trinket is 0.7 inch by 1.5 inch, and the the um, the trinket is 0.6 by one, I think. So yeah. it, it's really close. Um, we also have a comparison. Yeah, that one. So that this one. one? Yeah, this fine. one has all of them, so I may as well grab this one. Grab that photo. Yeah. Are you doing a live video editing here? Yeah, yeah, it's dangerous, but I'm going to do it anyway. Danger. Yeah, Warning. so here you go. Okay, so the, the trinket's on the right, and the pro trinket is in the middle there. So you see, it's a little bit bigger, but it's not crazy bigger. And then um, there's an Uno for comparison. So I think that this is like a good family. Like, get a genuine Arduino Uno, prototype your project, get it working, and then if you need to put it in a small space, like you're doing a wearable project or you're doing a project with 3D printed, you know, like enclosure, you don't want to make it too big. You can just um, use a Pro Trinket yeah. instead. Okay, so someone wanted to know, can you use the Pro Trinket with Fona and LCDs? You can. Um, again, I would suggest prototyping it on um, an Arduino Uno, and then just don't use pin 2 and 7. Those two pins we reserve for the USB interface. If it works on your Arduino Uno, then basically just you know get it all working perfectly, and then you can move it onto the Pro Trinket. You can okay. do development with the Pro Trinket, but you don't have that USB serial debugging. So that's why I suggest always Starting with the Uno, and then we also have the three volt version. Yeah. So there's two versions. There's a five volt and three volt. The five volt is what I suggest for most people because it's five volt, 16 megahertz. It's like the, what you know and love. 
The three volt is for a little bit, it's a little bit more advanced because it's a lower voltage and it's a lower clock speed. Um, you can't drive the Uno at three volts at 60 megahertz. You have to lower the clock speed. So we did, which is fine. Um, and that one's great for if you want something lower power and you don't care that the speed's a little slower. Most things still work on it and it's more compatible with three volt sensors. So there's a choice. Most people tend to like the five volt version though. Where okay. do you go? All right, and so the last thing is that we shot that little video. Um, do you want to explain what this video is? You ex uh, oh, yeah, sure. I can yeah, show the no. bootloader. The bootloader oh, has yeah. this nice pulse healer. Okay, I'm going to do that right now. Uh, OK, plug in USB, and you'll see the bootloader LED is pulsing. That means it's USB enumerated and waiting for you to send it instructions. This will time out after about 10 seconds, so it gives you plenty of time to run your Arduino code, and upload it, compile it. Once it's done, it'll run the program. So right now it's just running a little test program for me and the LED will go out. To restart the bootloader, press the little bootloader reset button right there. And it will restart the USB enumeration and bootloading process. Okay. Okay. And that's it. That's the Pro Trinket, the story behind it. Yay. Um, we were able to keep uh, prices super low, $9.95 on this one, and then 7 bucks for uh, trinket. Yeah, I think and ten bucks is great. I mean, like yeah. for ten bucks, like it's it's basically you get um, everything you want for your Arduino project plus USB, which you can use for power or for um, you know uploading code. Um, I will eventually be able to show how to use this as a uh, mouse keyboard. You can do that with this. I just don't have a tutorial. There's a, there's tutorials online on how to do that with an Uno. This um, works out of the box with that stuff as well. Yeah, and one of the things we wanted to do with the trinket is make it even. Uh, more approachable. So we have um, 20 great projects. Uh, Mike, who's in the chat, we have the Getting Started with Trinket book coming out. Yeah. And for like seven bucks, it's it's almost the perfect price where the microcontroller, it doesn't matter what happens to your project. You're not like, oh my God, it's a $30 dev board. Yeah. I can't put this in a million different things. Um, someone emailed us and they said, oh, I have trinkets running my entire house. I have, they're all over the place doing different things. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I think there's a place for both. I think I, I, was, I still use trinkets all the time. They're great when you just see something really small, really fast, and really easy. Yeah. Per trinket is for. I have, the thing is, I actually had some projects that I wanted to make small wearables, and the trinket was not powerful enough. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I can't do these projects, these little these little 3D printed projects that can drive like OLEDs or um, more complicated yeah. audio and stuff. And then if you need shields, and that's the Arduino next, then and then Arduino. if you need like embedded Linux, you got Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone. Yeah. There's and a wide, wide range. Yeah, you can actually start low cost, super easy, and work your, all, your way up to kernel mods. I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Why am I start installing glibc over again? Yeah, okay. okay. And that, Lady Ada, was new products. Okay. Okay.